the big thing that I see in this book, Neil, is addressing the fact that when I go out on social media, I seem to be encountering a world that seems more and more divided every day as we seem to slice and dice each other up into all these different types of different types of people. My gender, my sexuality, my color, my this, my nation, my economic status, and that. And it, it, it just seems like we get further divided. Um, and of course, the message I get here on London Real over and over at the end of the shows is all we are all one. Something you're saying in here. How do you, how do you fight what seems to be an unwinnable war on say social media on the division with science and the universe? And do you think we can win that war? I have a cop out answer first and then I'll give a broader <laughs> okay. answer. You know, when the printing press was invented in the 1400s, I forgot the exact year, 14 somethings, um, it would still take a century or more before anyone figured out you could use a printing press to print news on it and then make a broadsheet and distribute that. That Someone had to like invent that idea as an application of the printing press, as well as other, can you print something more than the Bible? Sure. All those scrolls of other books that print other books, all right? So it was a new idea about how to communicate with the masses that required some level of um, inventive thinking about how to invoke it. And of course, the printing press would be used for propaganda, okay? You can spread false information with it as well. So what do you do about that? Well, there's not much you can do because someone can just make a printing press. All right, so we, we kind of deal with it, all right? Um, to believe that we are in unique times where we have divisive ways, I think is false. If you go back 80 years, go back right into the Second World War, I did the math on this, you go from 1939 to 1945, 1,000 human beings were killed per hour in the service of that war. 1,000 from 1939 to 1945. Is there any greater measure of divisiveness than that? So yeah, there's a dust up on social media. I'd like taking the long view so I have context and perspective. Yeah, I wish it weren't the case. But yeah, and you know, social media feeds anger and hatred and there's Isolated acts of anger and hatred, yes, that's bad, and it should not be. But human beings have been at war with each other ever since we've had civilization, and most of that timeline predates the Internet. So I just want to put that out there, just as my first comment. And the Internet is new, getting back to the printing press analog. Internet is new in the way it's, social media is new. So maybe we're just crawling right now. We don't, we haven't really shaken out the, the adjustment factors to this new means of communication. Maybe in 10 years, a wave of maturity will descend upon us and the internet will be used as it was intended by it, by those who shaped what it is today as a means of sharing uh, the greatest of human knowledge and wisdom for the benefit of all and for entertainment for sure i mean why not so uh so th that's kind of wishful thinking that the internet will figure out how to be an internet and right now we're not there yet but what i'll say much more directedly is um people overvalue their opinions. And when you do that, it leads to fights. I spend the first chapter, it, it's called uh, Truth and Beauty, and the whole, the whole first part is on truths. What are truths, right? There's the kind of truth scientists reach, which are objective truths. These are truths that are established by experiment and observation, okay? Then there's like a political truth, which is what you think is true after it's been repeated incessantly to you. That's the foundations of propaganda, okay? Then there's a third truth, we call it, let's call it a personal truth, which is something is true for you, but 
it's not necessarily true for other people. And if you require that they share that truth, it will require an act of persuasion or in the limit, some act of threat or violence. Okay? Is Jesus your savior? In a free country, no one is going to take that from you. Do you require that other people, that, by the way, it's your personal truth. Do you require others feel the same way? Well, we know the consequences of that, historically. Is, is Muhammad your final prophet on earth? You require, do you require other people feel the same way? So to the extent that we recognize when our personal truth is only that and just that, in a free country, I have my personal truth. You can't take it from me. And the law protects my personal truth, as it should. Objective truth, if you're going to make laws and legislation, I kind of think it should be based on objective truths. Because those would apply to everyone, whether or not you believe in those laws, in those truths. That's what an objective truth is. It's true whether or not you believe in it. That's kind of a good thing to base laws on that have to apply to everybody, I'm thinking. Okay? So, so what do we do about it? I think not enough people learn in school or are taught in school what science is and how and why it works. So that the science deniers out there, like, why are you denying science? Oh, because science is saying something you don't like? You don't want to be true? You don't have that option. No, that's not how it works. You can't protest the laws of gravity next week because you gained three pounds this week. No. No. It's not subject to your opinion. And I don't think enough of us know this. So that when you have fights in Parliament or in Congress, let those fights be about true opinions. Oh, should we have a carbon tax or should we levy tariffs? Should we? These are genuine political opinions. But if you go into the halls of government and they're fighting over whether humans are, are warming the earth, fighting over whether or not that's true, you are wasting time. Precious time, because that is not the behavior of people who should be shepherds of our civilization. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public, and he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is going to be fast, it's going to be bloody, it's going to be nasty. But at the same time, he's going to show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now, we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim. Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's going to happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. I'm looking for partners, collaborators, colleagues who want to join forces with me around the globe and create real value, generational wealth, and financial freedom for everyone else around the world. Get involved in the cryptocurrency markets. Get involved in the NFT markets. This is your moment. Life all comes down to a few moments. Don't let this pass. Now it's not too late. Next year's gonna be too late. Ultimately, this is about freedom. That's the way I see it. This is about giving power back to the people and enabling billions of people worldwide to use the financial markets to improve their lives and those of their friends and their families and their communities. Honestly, I think it's a violation of human rights not to allow people basic access to financial services. Because right now people are being kept in the dark, they're being robbed of education, and it's a travesty. And so I'm looking for people that wanna join me and be a part of this solution. And that all happens inside the DeFi Academy. The gains my students are making are absolutely amazing. Double, triple digit gains in the first month alone. That's amazing. 
This will change your life. Now is the time to get involved. I'm gonna tell you exactly how my students in my academy made money in the last 30 days. I'm talking about real trading results. And let me just whet your appetite a little bit. Let me hit you with some numbers. I'm talking Brendan from New Zealand is up 68.77% on the month. Steve from Europe up 83%. Albert in Singapore up 169.9% on one single trade. I got Susan up 153% on her call options alone. Also rocking 139% returns and 442% returns as well on individual trades. These are people that are changing their financial future in the last 30 days, but it's based on trading discipline. I've graduated over 500 students from inside my academy from over 54 countries around the world. It's amazing. When it comes to crypto, DeFi, and blockchain, we love this space. We truly believe it's the future. This is down to our core. It's authentic to what we're doing, and everybody can tell through the camera because you can't make this stuff up. If you're watching me now, wherever you are, I implore you, take 60 seconds right now and join my academy. Apply today. Now you've got a chance. Life all comes down to a few moments. What are you gonna do? What's the choice that you're going to make?